Welcome back to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your continued support to our channel. If someone asks you to describe the nature of our politics, how would you summarize the nature of the Kenyan politics? Others would say heated. Others say it's a, a dirty game. You know, you would say very many things about our politics. But if there is one term that describes our politics, it is politics of betrayal. That is one common denominator, that our politics is engraved in betrayal. And with betrayal comes interests. That as long as politicians have got their interests, playing along together, then they will work together. Once they start reading from different pages and they realize that their, their interests do not converge, then they disagree. Now, very funny enough is that we have followed our politicians so much that as long as the de facto leaders are working together, then the electors would want to work together. When they fall out, then we also want to fall out. Now, if there is one betrayal that has always been spoken about, or do I call it disagreement? Is the dis disagreement or lack of appreciation between Raila Molodinga and the people of mountain of the mountain? And don't get me wrong, because it finally came out from Gashagwa himself. Rigedi Gashagwa, the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, has always denied any significant role that Raila ever played in Mount Kenya. And before I give you this video where Gashagwa is actually revealing that Raila did a lot to Mount Kenya. Not only him, but his father, Jaramugyo Gingo Dinga, supported them. But they have never appreciated. I want to show you a video how Gashagwa has always bashed Raila Molo Dinga, saying how he betrayed Mwai Kibaki and how he got into the government of Mwai Kibaki through the back door. So that as we watch the one that is now revealing that Raila has re really been their friend, but they have never, uh, Jarudisha Mkono, you will know what I'm talking about. Because we've heard these stories where MOUs are being signed in our absence. That when politicians fall out, we are told, oh, we signed this. Do you remember the MOU of uh, 207, was it? 202, when... Raila said Kibaki Tosha, we were told that there was an MOU that was signed that Raila was to become a prime minister. I think they were going to amend the constitution. We've also heard that, you know, when, when, when Kenya gained independence, independence and we were approaching a period where we had to start governing ourselves, Jomo Kenyatta was in jail or some detention. And when the powers that be the colonial masters wanted to give us our autonomy. They approached Jaramugyo Gingo Dinga and Jaramugyo Gingo Dinga said no. And these are things that we've always read their past but we've seen and ha we've heard them. And I want you to watch how Rigeti Gishaga has always described Raila Molo Dinga. Then later you will see the change of heart and we will be asking ourselves why. Kindly listen to Rigeti Gishaga. Is a country of the rule of law and we have a constitution. We Jamaya Mandabano Amezoya to force his way into government through violence. In nineteen eighty two he masterminded a military coup against the government of President Daniel Ramoy. Many Kenyans died and property was destroyed. He wanted to come to power through the back door. It was not possible. In 1997, when he stood for presidency, 
he was number four, he lost. He brought chaos and violence, and President Daniel Arboy brought him to government and made him Minister for Energy. You know what happened? Akakuja kwa serikali ya Moi, akaisabaratisha. In the year 2007, Mwai Kibaki, our beloved president, defeated him hands down. He brought chaos. Many Kenyans died. Property was destroyed. And Kibaki brought him into government through Nusumukate. You know what he did to Mwai Kibaki. In the year 2017, again, President, William, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta defeated him again. He brought chaos. He sowed fear to President Kenyatta. He brought him to government through the handshake. He came and destroyed the entire Jubilee agenda. Made life impossible. Confused our president. And made all projects to stall. 2022, we defeated him. Sahile Rais Kibaki alipata shida. Uchagusu wa 2007. Hakupata wabunge wa kumusaidia aunde serikali na ongoze Kenya. Huyu kiongozi Kalonzo Musyoka wakiwa na huyu mudhama. Walikaa chini na Rais Kibaki. Kalonzo akakuwa makamu wa Rais. Huyu Profesa Kifudha Kibwana akakuwa waziri. Huyu mudhama akakuwa chief whip. Wabunge wale wa Kalonzo na wale wa PNU wa Kibaki wakashikana Kenya ikaenda mbele. Watu walikuwa wanataka kusikia sauti ya Kalonzo Musyoka kwa sababu ndio mwenye kusaidia Kibaki, sio huyu mtu ya kitenda wili. Huyu alimwangaisha, alimuumiza. Now ladies and gentlemen, the reason I have shown you these two videos is not because I want to delve into some kind of tribal politics. In any case, if there is something that I want to denounce on this channel, is tribal politics where leaders would always want to work together they force us to work with them and then when they disagree they want to force us to disagree now the main reason why i've showed you this video is because finally rigeti Shagwa is telling us that he understands the level of the significance of uh, contribution political speaking of other leaders like raila and kalonzo musyoka and you know, funnily enough, he's saying that despite other leaders trying to endear themselves to the Mount Kenya fraternity, despite, you know, just to be specific, despite, for example, Raila Mulundinga, despite his father maintaining that if Kenyatta was not going to be removed from jail, he was not going to form any government, despite Raila Mulundinga saying Kibaki Tosha, in 2020, in 2002, he's saying they have never appreciated. They have never reciprocated, politically speaking. Can you listen to Rigeti Keshagwa? President William Ruto is the greatest beneficiary of our gratitude. And indeed the only leader outside this region since independence. Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Alisaidia Kenyatta. Wakati ya ukoloni. Kasema, no freedom without Kenyatta. Kenyatta achidiwe kuwaza. We never showed him gratitude. Raila Odinga alikuja haka support kebake tuu tuu. We have never shown him any gratitude. Kalonzo alikuja haka shikilia kebake tuu seven. We have never shown him any gratitude. But President William Ruto, by supporting our son Uhuru Kenyatta, we showed him a lot of gratitude. So I want to ask our young leaders to be measured when they speak about their community wakiwa inje kwa wageni. Hata kama hiko shida nyumbani. Iyo ni mamba ya kupeleka inje? Now I want you to note that when Rigeti Keshagwa was revealing just how significant Raila has been to Mount Kenya, yet they have never appreciated him, that message was not directly channel to Raila Mulodinga. That message was going to William Samuel Ruto. Because Rigadi is saying that despite these two leaders doing something in the lives of, 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 of Mount Kenya voters, they rejected. They have never 
voted for Kalonzo Raila. In any case, in 2013, 2017, and 2022, Kalonzo and Raila have been together. And so if Mount Kenya was to appreciate, they would have appreciated the, the duo, that is Raila and Kalonzo, either in 2013, 2017, or 2022. But he's telling William Ruto just how lucky he could be that Ruto supported Uhuru Kenyatta, I think, during the Hague choreographed and hyped case. And with that alone, Mount Kenya voted for William Ruto to the man. And he had this warning, William Ruto, that don't take us for a ride. Don't, you know, you, you, you must feel the magnitude of our support. And I believe he's doing that because he looks at himself as the de facto leader of Mount Kenya and is warning William Ruto that this support might change to go to someone else. He's telling William Ruto we can decide on one accord to support Kalonzo or Raila Molodinga. I doubt whether they can do that, but that is the, 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 the nature of that of his tone. It is a warning to William Ruto. But when you look at things, William Ruto seems to have uh, made a U-turn. He's not looking for Mount Kenya support base. I believe that he's now looking more to the West, the, the Western and Nyanza, Raila strongholds. I don't know what you think, because Rigad, in essence, is telling us that for those period, Mount Kenya electorates, and of course the leaders who have always campaigned, have always been selfish towards Kalonzo and Raila Molodinga, and especially to Raila. That is what he's revealing. And in essence, he's saying, because when you pre they, they, they've always, they have always presented Raila as a devil, the man who interfered with Kibaki's government. They do not want, especially, you know, Anytime they are campaigning, they have always tarnished Raila's name. Mudslinging, mudslinging, and you know, saying all sorts of things, including Raila Nishatani, Mutu Akitandawili, the way he, he does. He is confessing that they have been doing this intentionally to ensure that he never gets votes. He's also confirming that we usually listen to our leaders. But why is he making a U turn? He's just realized that there's a possibility that they're not going to work with William Ruto. And therefore, he's preparing psychologically the mountain that if this guy is going to take our numbers for granted, then we can switch. Interest, as I said, is playing along here. William Ruto is no longer interested in the mountain votes, and Gashagwa knows it. He's going to pick a few leaders. William Ruto will go with the Waiguru, Kimani Chungwa, Dindi Nyoro. And they're going to form, if, if, if the leaders are going to accept to get into the new boat, where Joho, Paranya, and Raila will be, the, 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 that support base will be together. Those who will accept to get into the boat, well and good. And Kashagwa has realized that this is another betrayal. Just the same way that he's saying that they've never supported Raila and Kalonzo this time round, it might be the other way around. William Ruto is soon ditching them because what they feel is that William Ruto should appreciate because they supported him. Politics of betrayal is going to play along. They are going to be betrayed. And in this sense, I don't know who's going to claim to be betrayed. Some people say Gashagwa got more than he deserved. Because he was not supposed even to be a deputy president. But politics is dynamic and he got himself as a deputy. And they are saying he should not complain. Gashagwa says it was because of me representing the mountain. That's why you got over 3.5 million votes. As we approach 2027, my take would be very simple. I know that when people sit down to start scrutinizing how people have voted in this country, it is true that the mountain have betrayed Raila for far too long. But what we want to say is that all these leaders are the same. They are rich. They are wealthy. They belong to a certain class. This time round, we need to look for leaders with integrity. Because I feel that the Kenya Kwanzaa government is the worst government that we've, we've ever had. 
but because of historical injustices and politically that at the top there with people you know like they're saying Raila has been betrayed now they want to form other alliances and they have choreographed a campaign slogan it will be this time round Ruto has given the Nyanza people attorney general and the finance minister and things they've never had so this is going to block their eyes from looking at even leaders who can do better because let me tell you it doesn't matter whether you have someone at the helm all we need to do is that we are a tribal station where institutions will work even if it is a kikuyu or a lura kisi or a mjikenda whoever the nubian whoever is in that position will work with integrity to give services to kenyans so that we don't need our man to get development so that we don't need our daughter to get development so that we don't need to praise William Ruto the way I saw the Nyanza you know, politicians worshipping Ruto to get development. We are all taxpayers. We need to restructure our policies so that we don't care who, who voted for who in which year and who has betrayed who so that we have leaders and scrutinize them because we will be victims of, you know, of voting leaders who will not work for us. Simply because these people did not vote for us and therefore we don't vote for them. You know, these kind of things. Gashako is revealing that they have been selfish. As we approach 2027, let us look and scrutinize our leaders. Let us not allow them to ruin us. Let us not vote with history. Let us look at individual leaders, especially those who have never been in government because all these people are the same. We need some fresh blood. I repeat in this channel that the only person I can ever vote for is Okio Mutata. He has demonstrated that he can be a good leader. All these other people, mm -mm. and that's just my opinion. I don't know what you think. Do you think, especially if you are from Mount Kenya, do you believe that Mount Kenya is have, have been has been selfish in the money they vote against Raila? Tell me your opinion about this.